I am a senior software engineer working at a tech startup on top of the Empire State Building. And a lot of people on my Discord have been asking me if I have any advice or tips on how to get their first job, especially given the market today with AI and everything like that. I have a bunch of interesting ideas that I want to share with you. And later in the video, I also have created a program that will help you add one thing to your resume that will make you stand out compared to everyone else. It will make it more attractive for recruiters too. But first, to give you some context, when I was graduating, I applied to over 100 jobs and I didn't get any phone calls, like zero. And I was so confused because I had graduated from a master's degree at a top college at UCLA. I came from Europe to the US like to pursue my dream. I made a lot of sacrifices, I spent a lot of money, and I was getting zero results like, in terms of jobs. And my parents were calling me, asking me, hey, son, how are your job applications going? And I didn't know what to tell them. Like, would I need to just come back home? Was all of it for nothing? Will I come back as a failure? Those were the types of things that were on my mind. So this was this period of time. I'll explain how I ultimately figured out a way to get a job, but later I'm gonna just skip two years after. So I had actually a job that I kept for two years and then I, I wanted to switch it. At that moment, I started applying to a few companies and bro, it's actually crazy. I was flooded with calls from companies inviting me to do interviews with offers. It was just such a different contrast compared to my first experience. And I was like, what the hell is that? What is the difference? The main difference is the experience. Even though it was just one startup, one company that I had under my belt. So the resume was pretty much the same, but they just added one element to it. And that made a huge difference. That switched from companies not wanting to call me to like more than 20 companies calling me and like good companies with amazing offers. And ultimately I doubled my salary actually from, from that switch. So why is the contrast so big? You have to understand one thing. This is point number one. Companies in general throughout time, this is not true only now, this has been true throughout time. Companies, they don't want to take risks when they hire someone. Because when you hire a junior developer, you there is the process, the time investment that you spend, or actually when you hire any employee, there's a time investment you spend in the interviews, all of that process. Then there's the time investment you spend to recruit this person, right? Like teach them at the beginning. And also there's a salary that you pay them. So it's a lot of money that is spent on one individual that they hire. And if this person turns out that they're not good enough, that they're not able to contribute or they don't learn fast enough, and it's just, at some point, it's just a waste of time of investing more time into them. Then they have to let that person go and find someone else. And they have to repeat this exact same process. All of that cost is repeated. And again, no guarantees that that second person is going to be better than the first one. There's never any guarantees of that. This means that it's a huge risk for a company, right? You're going to invest a lot of time, a lot of money, and then maybe it will all be for nothing. That's why if they want to, if they can play it safe, they will always play it safe. If they can hire someone who already has experience, who like it's pretty safe because they have been validated by someone else. And from the moment they come in the company, they can start contributing from day one, like theoretically. Then obviously they're going to invest more in someone like that. They're going to give preference. Because even in interview, like when I was applying for jobs, I didn't get like, why wouldn't they even just call me at least? Give me a chance. But for them, it's also time wasted, right? They have a lot of candidates. And even like spending an hour of, of one of the engineers or one of the recruiters calling you and talking to you, it's again, it's investment. It's money at the end of the day. So you have to understand this because once you understand how companies think, you can position yourself to be more attractive for them. That's number one. Number two, one of the big reasons why you're struggling as a junior developer right now is that recently this year, there have been a lot of tech layoffs. Like You probably heard about it. Companies like Amazon, like Google, like laying off tens of thousands of employees. And among them, a lot of were engineers as well. The thing that this creates in the market is that all of a sudden you have a huge amount of talented engineers because engineers who work at those companies, obviously they're talented. They're like top of the market. So you have a huge base of those talented engineers, but the number of jobs has kind of shrunk, right? Because all those companies, they have laid off their employees. You don't have more jobs that have appeared all of a sudden, but then you have this huge talent pool that is available. So now the competition just became a lot bigger because all those extra people who entered the market, they're all looking for a job. This means that you as a junior, you'll naturally have less chances that you had before. It doesn't mean that you have zero chances. It doesn't mean that there are zero positions available for you, but just 
it's simple math. If there are more people who come to the market, there's more competition, probabilities like chances decrease. But don't worry, bro. I'll give you some ideas of things that you can do. Number three, one big fear that juniors have right now is AI. You think that AI is going to replace you and that's one of the reasons why there's less jobs right now and there will be even less in the future. I talk a lot about AI on this channel. I give you different tips. I, I, I talk about the impact that AI is going to have on the market and on your life. The reality, though, is that right now, that's not the reason why you're not able to find a job because AI hasn't replaced, to my knowledge, really any engineers yet. It's still too early. And right now, actually, AI is creating more jobs because you have a lot of new companies that are being formed, a lot of money is being poured into that direction. So there is actually an increasing need of engineers right now, and especially engineers who can like, uh, like work together with AI, work with those APIs, like know about prompt engineering and things like that to build like those badass, interesting AI apps. So there's actually a need for this. I think in a couple of years, it's going to be very different. I think down the line, actually, it will lead to a reduction of jobs. But right now, it's absolutely not the case. So this one, we're going to remove this reason. But the main question is now what to do. So you understand the reasons why the market is the way it is. You understand why you're struggling, but you don't know what to do. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. The first thing that you need to do is you need to become job ready. Because again, remember the way companies think, you have to think yourself, why would the company benefit from hiring you? Like if I have a company today, for example, I want to hire people. I'm going to hire people who can, from the moment they come, they can either very quickly learn on the job or they can start contributing quickly, right? Because I don't want to waste time, money, like I have a business to run. That's why you need to think about how can you position yourself to be attractive for companies. So you have to learn skills, you have to build a profile, you have to learn technologies like React, for example, and start building side projects. You have to become more attractive. You need to, you need to figure out how can you stand out. And I've actually created something that will help you here. It's the Codebender AI program. It's a one month live cohort where I'll teach you how you can use AI to stand out. There are only 40 spots available though, so you have to act fast. We're gonna go through the steps of building and deploying a badass AI app that is tailored to you and that you can add to your resume. You'll also have access to a private community of people helping each other and a bunch of other things. Go to the link in the description if you wanna sign up and remember, there are only 40 spots available. They're gonna all fill up this week, so don't wait. After you become job ready, what you can do is basically what I did. You're gonna only target young startups that have high potential. Forget about the big companies because you probably don't have success with them already to begin with. So you're gonna focus on the young startups that have high potential and where you're gonna learn a lot. Because that's the main goal right now. Your main goal is to learn and get experience. For me, if I come back to the story at the beginning when I was graduating, I applied to all these companies, not getting any phone calls. Ultimately, what worked is a young startup that I found that was actually perfect for me because I love the vision. I love the product that they're trying to build. I love the team. The team was very small. We we're only seven people. and It was only three engineers, including myself. But the nice thing there was that it got me an opportunity to learn so much from very smart people and had a huge impact on this company because I was touching a lot of different things from the front end to the back end to the architecture. I was involved in a lot of different discussions. So I was really like a sponge trying to absorb as much as I can. Obviously, you're going to get paid probably a little bit less than the market, but you do get equity. In a young startup like this, you get a significant amount of equity, which can be super interesting if the company blows up. I wouldn't count too much on it, though, because like the chances that the startup that you join blows up and gets millions of dollars and then that equity turns to millions, it's very slim. So I wouldn't put like too much emphasis on that. Put more emphasis on the learning and still keep that in your pocket just in case it does happen and then like that equity is going to be worth a lot so that's amazing but your main focus is to learn that's the most important aspect right now once you get that experience and you want to switch to another job things are going to look very different for you you're going to have a much easier time now because that experience is key again remember the way companies think they don't want to take risks so once you have experience you're a much more attractive candidate for them more safe and then they'll want to give you an interview and an offer down the line that's also when your salary is going to increase by a lot. Like my salary nearly doubled when I switched from that first start where I was working at to the company where I work out now in NYC. This is my advice for you, young Codebender. Hope this helps. Don't forget the Codebender AI program is running out soon. There are only 40 spots available. So if you're serious, don't miss out. Take action now. Now, if you want to get started building up your resume, go watch this video where I helped 10 beginners build and deploy a bunch of AI side projects.